I don't always drink wine, but when I do, I prefer to drink it in a motorhome less than 30 feet long. Stick around, folks. We found some awesome floor plans of Class A RVs under 30 feet long. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to our channel. If this is the first time you've seen us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell when you do so you'll be notified every single Sunday when we put out a brand new video. But without any further ado, let's get started on our reviews of Class A RVs under 30 feet long. This Class A RV is the Coachman Pursuit model number 27 XPS. It measures in at just 29 feet long, has a tow capacity of 8,000 pounds, and it can sleep up to six people. When you walk into this mid-entry Class A RV, to the right you have the driver's cab area, and then you have your dining and living area that comes through the kitchen, then you have a mid-bath, and then behind me here is where the owner's bedroom is located. So our first impression when we walked in here is that this is a very compact Class A RV, but it has all the features that you need to enjoy a luxurious camping experience nonetheless. Now starting at the front of this RV, you have a really spacious driver's cab area. This is built on a Ford chassis with a V8 engine in it. That's a gasser. We have the same engine in our RV. We've been through the Rockies of Colorado and everywhere with that thing, and it powers through towing our Jeep with no problems at all. You'll also notice up front here, there are no obstructions to the front window at all. All. So you get a full view and that's one of the reasons we bought a Class A RV. We wanted that awesome view out the front window and this one certainly does not disappoint in that regard. Now the driver's seat is very open. Uh, all the controls are very easily accessible and the passenger seat where Susan sits, she really likes this because first of all it's nice and comfy. Second of all, it's got a little desk here that she can pull out so you can work while you're cruising on down the road. There's even a USB port and a 12 volt port here. And on the side over here, there is a 110 electrical outlet so she can plug in her computer, type away while we're rolling down the road. Also want to mention that there is an overhead bunk here as well. Now we're at the RV show and I can't raise the bunk up and down. Um, but it is there and available for someone to be able to sleep in. Just one person could sleep in there. And just to give you a rough idea of the size of it, it's about <clears throat> 80 inches and about, gosh, 35 inches wide. So one person could be able to sleep up there with no problem. Now, moving back into the coach, on the left-hand side here, we have a nice comfy couch. There's actually a nice drawer underneath here that pulls out for plenty of storage. Just above the couch, we have this nice large window, a couple of lights up here under the cabinetry, and these are really nice big open space up here to store lots of stuff away. So here I am sitting at the dinette in here, and it's a pretty comfy and large sized dinette. I would say you could seat four people here very, very comfortably. You'll also notice that we have a very large window here above the dinette table to let in lots of natural light. And above the dinette is where the TV is located. And that's actually in a really good spot. You could be here eating a meal and kind of watching the TV, you know, keeping an eye on the game while it's going on. Or you could sit on the couch and watch the game very comfortably from there as well. Now, this dinette will drop down and convert into a bed. And let's see how big that would be if you chose to do that you would end up with about 69 inches by 42 inches here. So, you know, an average sized adult or maybe a couple of kids would be able to sleep in this space. There's also storage underneath each of the dinette booths. And one last really nice feature is in this one spot in the dinette, there's a spot where you can drop a car seat tether back and tether right to the floor. Also want to mention that there's an outlet below the dinette table. So if you're sitting here with your computer doing some trip planning or what have you, you can plug right in and keep your computer charged up. So here we are just past the dinette and we're in the kitchen area. And the kitchen in here is very, very small and compact, but it looks really nice nonetheless. Up top here, we have a storage cabinet with these beautiful glass inlaid doors and then lots of storage space behind there. Next to that, we have our microwave oven. Then we have a beautiful range hood here and 
of course, a three burner stove below that. Now, underneath your stove, you have an oven down here so you can pop a pizza in there or bake some cookies or what have you and enjoy some nice baked goods. I do also want to point out this really nice tile backsplash that they have in here. This is real tile, so that's a really nice upgraded feature that's in here. And then you have a receptacle above so you can plug in your coffee pot or toaster, what have you. They also feature a double bowl sink in here with a big gooseneck faucet and a sprayer attached to that as well. Now there's also storage space underneath of the kitchen sink, but the one thing this kitchen is missing is kitchen drawers. There are none in here, but you can buy Hida drawers separately online and you can attach them to the underside of your dinette table and you can keep your kitchen utensils in there. We used to do that in our Class C RV because it was only 24 feet long and we had no drawers in that kitchen either. So just a little tip to help you stow all your utensils away. Now the refrigerator is located right here. This is a great size fridge for this rig. It's got a separate fridge and freezer. Very, very large. It runs on the battery because it is a 12 volt refrigerator. So here I am in the owner's bedroom all the way in the back of the coach and let's see how big the bed is back here. The mattress on this thing is uh, about 74 inches by 60 inches so it would be considered a short RV queen sized bed but nonetheless you get this beautiful headboard behind all this nice storage cabinetry above and around you have two lights here and then they have what's called the coach pap station so you can put your CPAP up top they have a grommet built in so you can pull your cords or tubes through there and you are good to go now up above this is one big giant storage area behind all three of these doors and then on each side there's a wardrobe closet where you can hang your garments as well now that side of the bed is a little tougher to get around than this side of the bed and so that would be susan's side and when i told her that she was like hey no problem the cabinet's bigger on that side anyway so hey ladies maybe you pick up some extra storage space if you end up on that side of the bed now down below this cabinetry you'll notice that there's a nightstand on each side of the bed and each nightstand also has a drawer that pulls out finally there are receptacles on each side of the bed so you can plug in if you have, you know, any electronics that you'd like to charge while you're sleeping away. Now, this is where the TV is located in this corner right here. And as you can see above, there is a cable and receptacle there. So you can put this on a bit of a swing arm and then be able to have a comfortable view while you're laying in bed and drifting away to sleep at night. So here I am in the shower in the bathroom in this Class A RV. And this is what's called a mid split bath and what that means is the bathroom's in the middle of the coach it's between the bedroom and the living area and it's also split where the shower's on one side of the hallway and the toilet and vanity are on the other side of the hallway a nice advantage to this kind of setup is that someone can be in here taking a shower maybe the other person's in there going to the bathroom or brushing their teeth or whatever but two people can be doing things at the same time so it's a very efficient use of the space. A couple of other nice things to point out are at the hallway entrance here, you can close this door and cut yourself off from the rest of the coach. And there's another door behind me here that cuts the bedroom off from the bathroom too. So you can also close off both of them and just use this all as one big bathroom. Now inside the shower itself, you guys know if you've seen our videos before, I am 5'11". So let's check out our headroom in here and see what we're working with. Yep, up into the skylight, we have six feet, 10 inches of space. So a really good amount of space. In fact, the headroom in this entire Class A RV is pretty tall. I mean, it's seven feet tall. So for you taller folks, you know, this Class A would be a really, really good choice. Now, once inside the shower, uh, it's not the biggest shower in the world, that's for sure, especially when you stand sideways. You know, I'm gonna be right up against this shower door. Uh, but I do like the surrounds that are in here. They're very, very nice. Uh, there's a little soap dish and shampoo spot behind me here. Um, and it's got a removable wand as well. They've used a retractable shower door here, which is a great option for this space because retractable shower doors really do save a lot of space inside the shower. So here I am in the other side of the mid bath across the hall from the shower. Susan's now standing in the shower. 
and this is where your commode and vanity are located now we have a mirror on the wall here above the vanity sink which is a very good size sink by the way and then you have a little bit of countertop space around it there's also a couple of doors down below for storage and there's also some open storage down below there's a, also a door here which is like a little linen closet inside the bathroom and finally there is a receptacle just below the countertop so if you need to plug in a hair dryer or something you can always do that as well there's also a nice little towel ring here now as far as sitting on the commode goes well as far as the elbow test no luck on that side but flying colors to my right this motorhome is the thor vegas model number 24.1 it measures in at just 25 feet 8 inches long has a tow capacity of 6,000 pounds and it can sleep up to five people when you first walk into this Class A RV, on the right-hand side is where the driver's cab and over-cab are located. We then wrap on around through the living and kitchen area. Here in the mid-coach is where the bathroom is located, and behind me is the bedroom. Now, our first impression upon walking in here is that this feels really nice and spacious towards the front end of the coach. With the mid bath in here though, it kind of creates a little bit of a barrier to the back end of the coach, but what it also does is it creates some privacy in the bedroom area. A lot of uh, Class A motorhomes have the bathroom all the way in the back, and that way the whole entire coach feels much larger. But with the mid bath here, it does create some nice privacy in the back. So here we are at the driver's cab area, and as you can see, we have some nice, big, comfy captain's chairs here. Both seats do swivel around, so they'll face into the rig. So if you have some friends, family or over, or anyone like that, they can swivel on around and be comfortable while they're seated here. Now, this is on a Ford chassis, which is a gas motor. And uh, we have a gas motor in our Class A motorhome. We just took it through the Rockies over the summer, and man, our motor powered us over those mountains, no problem at all. This also has a really nice big windshield, no impediment to the view at all, which is, again, is one of the best features in a Class A motorhome to enjoy. Now, the driver's side, very simple setup. Everything is very reachable and convenient. And on the passenger side here, we have this little desk in place. This just folds right out. You can sit here and work while you're cruising down the road. Susan's sitting here editing video and stuff while we're bouncing down the road sometimes. <laughs> You have some USB ports and a receptacle that are available for you as well. So a couple more things to mention about the driver's cab area. First of all, there is an over cab bunk bed that will come on down with some electronic controls. There's no power in this unit right now. We're at an RV show, so I can't lower it down and show you that. But the measurement on it uh, is gonna be approximately 78 inches. And this one looks to be about i would say 38 inches wide or so so one person could sleep up in this bunk pretty easily uh, one other thing to note even when the bunk is all the way in the up position there is a step up into the driver's cab area so i've already come up here a couple times and hit my head on the ceiling so it's just something to keep in mind you would have to kind of stay crouched up in this area while you're entering and, uh, and exiting the driver's cab area so here I am sitting on this nice comfy couch right behind the driver's seat. And this couch is in a great position in here and it serves a few uses. It's not just a couch, but the positioning of it is very nice. It's right across from the TV, which is mounted over top of the entry door. So you have a nice view of it. Also, you'd have a view of it if you were in the overhead bunk going to sleep at night. You can watch the TV as you drift off to sleep up there. Now the sofa itself, has a cup holder on one side. It's got a, a USB charge port on the other side. And then there is a receptacle on the wall on my right hand side. So if you're sitting here and you need to charge any electronic devices or anything, you can certainly do that. Now, your couch in here also serves as your dinette. And there is a freestanding table. Well, no, it's not a freestanding, but it's a pole mounted table that would go across here. So when you're sitting here, you can enjoy your dinner whatever or whatever while you're watching tv boy i am not with it this morning am i come on it's the first tour mike let's get going here um anyway so you have that option that's the two functions that this couch serves the third function is that it is also a bed and the way you would get this to to sort of work is you remove your pillows like this i'll just throw them up here and then this just pulls on out it's not really a jackknife, it's more like a sofa bed. 
and you just put these little legs down and then there you go and then this back cushion <clears throat> folds on down into place and that is where the uh <laughs> the dinette tabletop stows away also it's a little bit of an inconvenient location because i guess you have to pull the bed out to get to the table i would probably try to find a different place to stow it somewhere in here but anyway let's check out the size of this bed and this thing's going to measure in at about 70 inches long by 56 inches wide so almost a short queen bed in here not a bad size bed two adults or certainly two kids would be able to sleep on this couch very easily now just above where the couch is located we have this nice large window overhead to let in a lot of natural light there's a couple of lights under here there's also a receptacle on each side of the underside of these cabinets and then these doors lift up they do stay in place which is a great feature so you can access all of your gear up in those cabinets now across from the couch is where the kitchen area is located and as i mentioned uh, just a couple seconds ago the tv is mounted just above the entry door in here then as we work our way across i really like the cabinetry in here it's a very nice cabinet it looks very well built and behind here we have you know lots of storage space they do have a um, shelf in here and these are fully adjustable shelves which is really just a terrific thing to do that way you can make everything fit just the way you want it to down below that there is a light underneath of here to light up your countertop area there's also one over here to light up your cooktop nice window over top of the countertop is always a great feature and then of course we have a nice big single bowl round sink in here with a gooseneck faucet and a sprayer that pulls out so that's a nice feature and then they have a two burner cooktop here sorry rachel today i'm gonna block you and uh the only thing i would change about this and you guys have probably heard me say this in other videos i wish these burners were front to back and that way they would take up less space widthwise and that would give you more countertop space in here that way if you want to hook up a coffee pot or a toaster or something like that you can certainly do that. Now, there is some extra countertop space. It's on the other side of the sink here, and you can raise that up, put your coffee pot or toaster there, and there's even a receptacle on the side so you can plug in. Now, just below the cooktop is where the convection microwave is, and then we've got a nice big drawer underneath for pots and pans, a bank of three drawers here for all your kitchen utensils, and then a little extra storage or a trash can cabinet under the sink. So just past the cooktop is where the refrigerator is located. And it's a little bit tight in this hallway when you open the fridge, but you can do it. And the doors do swing all the way open so you can have full access to your refrigerator and your separate freezer above. So just past the mid bath is where the bedroom is located back here. And, and it's nice and private back here because you know it's kind of separated from the rest of the coach. Now, this is a big bedroom and it's almost all mattress or it's also twin beds back here. The way you see it right now is the twin beds set up. Uh, let's see how big these beds are. We're talking about uh, 74 inches by 38 inches wide. So decent size, but if you're a taller person, that might be a little bit of a, a squeeze for you to sleep in here comfortably. Uh, your other option is to use this extra pillow, place it in this part right here where my legs are, and you can turn this into one gigantic bed. If you did that, we know it would be 74 inches, and it's as wide as the whole coach, so you got 90 inches wide. So, think about this, if you're taller and you don't wanna sleep you know, north to south, you could sleep east to west, and then you have 90 inches of space from head to toe, and you've got 74 inches wide. So this makes an ultra big king-sized bed back here if you'd rather go that route. Now, up above here, you'll notice that there is storage cabinets around the whole perimeter of the room. Each of the cabinets have lights under them, and the two side cabinets have an electrical receptacle under them. So if you need to plug in any electronics while you're you know, reading a book or reading your Kindle or charging your phone overnight, you can certainly do those things. There's also three windows back here. Now, two of them will open, the ones on the sides. The rear window will not, but you can still get a nice cross breeze through here as well. 
The TV is mounted on the wall behind the bathroom. Great spot while you lay in here and drift off to sleep at night. And then just to my right here, there's a little uh, couple of USB ports and a couple of built-in shelves to hold things like your Kindle or iPhone while you're charging them up. Now, as you can see right here, this is set up as the twin bed option. And this little piece is really kind of cool, right? It's, it's kind of your, you know, you're sitting in here, you can have a glass of wine and relax, but it's nice to have a couple of cup holders built in. If you were gonna convert this into a king bed, you would just take this cushion and flip it over and it's nice and soft on the other side. And that way it becomes a part of your bed. And I also wanna mention there are a couple of drawers underneath of here for some additional storage. Now, one last thing to mention about the bedroom is you also have a nice mirrored wardrobe uh, cabinet here. And uh, there's a bar up top that you can hang all of your garments. There's also a table and uh, in this closet that stows in here. And this table is used, I forgot to mention it earlier, but it goes in between the two captain's chairs up front. So when you do turn them around into the rig, you can have a table in between those two chairs. Now, just below your wardrobe cabinet, you have two full extension drawers that pull out for even more storage. Now here we are back at the mid coach and we're gonna take a look at the bathroom, but I wanted to start on the outside because this has an unusual door system set up in it. First of all, both of these doors open out and what they do is they sort of cut off the hallway and the living area and they can also cut off the bedroom area so you can have more privacy inside your bathroom. So there's a little magnetic catch up top so the door doesn't bang into the fridge. I'll just show you real quick. And then the back door just opens all the way up. And that can be used to cut off access into the bedroom or create privacy, I should say. There's also a full length mirror here. So, you know, if you want to check yourself out in the morning before you're ready to go for the day, you can do that as well. So here we are in the bathroom area and with those doors opened up like we just showed you, it actually feels pretty big in here. Now here I am standing in the shower as I usually do. And this is a corner style shower with a curtain that pulls around. And if you've seen any of our other videos, you know I don't like this style, this setup. The shower stall is a little bit small in my opinion and with the shower curtain wrapped around you, I know it would be stuck to me the entire time I took a shower. So I wish they had a little bigger shower base in here and then maybe some type of a glass door design so it's a little more convenient, but it is what it is. On my right hand side here, there are three shelves for soap or shampoo bottles or potpourri. Uh, nothing like having a fresh smelling shower. And then you have your wand here. Now let's check our ceiling height in here as well while I'm standing here. Let's see what we have. Total height wise it, to the top of the skylight is six feet, nine inches. The headroom just in the normal floor to ceiling throughout the entire coach is six feet, 10 inches. So a lot of ceiling height in here for you taller folks. This might be a, a good choice for you if you're looking for a smaller motor home. Now, just outside of the shower is a really skinny little medicine cabinet here, but it's got three shelves built into it. Provides you a little uh, space to put your toiletries away. And then just outside the shower is where the vanity is located. Uh, and then just above that, you do have an electrical outlet in case you want to plug in a curling iron or hair dryer or whatever you need. And then finally, there's a little bit of storage underneath of the sink. Now, just above where the toilet is located, you've got a little bit more storage here. You can store some, you know, towels or extra TP or toilet chemical or whatever in there. And then finally, here I am sitting on the commode. Not gonna pass the elbow test on that side, but on my right hand side, plenty of room. So here we are outside of this coach. And just outside of the entry door, there's a small storage compartment down below. But in the very back of this rig, they have this large pass-through storage area that's accessible from all three sides, which is fantastic. They used to build them so it was just accessible on one side or the other. And then anything you stored in the middle, it was really hard to get to. But with this back access door, it makes it much more convenient. I also want to point out that all of the storage compartments are lighted as well. This Class A motorhome is the Jayco Alante model number 27A. It measures in at 29 feet, 11 inches long, has a tow capacity of 5,000 pounds, and it can sleep up to six people. When you first walk into this Class A RV, on the right-hand side is where the driver's cab is located. 
As you wrap on around, we go through the dinette area, living area, and kitchen, and towards the back of this RV is where the owner's bedroom and bathroom are located. So walking in here, my first impression is that this is a really nice Class A RV. It's got everything I think you can think of in here that you'll need to enjoy a really luxurious and comfortable camping experience. Now let's start at the front of this unit. And in the driver's seat here, uh, you'll notice that there is a Ford logo on the steering wheel. So this is built on a Ford chassis. It's got the Ford V8 engine in it. We have that same Ford V8 engine in our Class A RV. We've driven that baby through the Rockies, all across the country, everywhere. It's a beast of an engine uh, for a gasser. And uh, it pulls us, even though we tow the Jeep behind us, up and over the Rockies with no problem. So a great engine in this particular unit. Now it's very comfortable up here, but it's also very basic. There's not a lot of confusing things going on. You know, you've got your, you know, your radio controls and climate controls. You've got a nice dash set up here. All of your other controls are just at a finger's touch. There's USB ports all over the place in here, so you really can't go wrong. But one in, you know, really neat little feature is sort of behind me here. They have these little reading lights sort of up and over your head. So if it's nighttime and you need to stop and read something, you can just click on your light. It shines over your shoulder and you can see whatever it is you need to look at. Kind of an unusual feature uh, up front here. Now in the passenger side, there's a couple of neat features. And I know in our RV, we do the same thing and Susan can work while we're driving down the road, but this little section just pulls straight out. You can set a computer up here or paperwork or anything that you need that you might be working on while you're driving down the road. It's very convenient for that. Just off to the right hand side, there's a receptacle and a couple of USB ports as well. So just a really great setup. I know Susan would enjoy driving in here and, you know, answering emails and YouTube comments while we're driving on down the road. Now, over top of the driver's cab is a bunk that goes up and down, and these are really fantastic. We have one in our RV as well. Uh, the grandkids can sleep up there. My kids, my adult kids have slept up there several times. So two people can get up here very, very comfortably. This whole entire section with cabinetry and everything, there is additional storage there. Um, but when this comes down, it's a perfect place to sleep. There's a little ladder that's stowed away in the basement down below. You can set that up so people can climb up in here. Now let's see what size this is real quick. Let me just kick my shoes off. So this is a big mattress up here and it's 54 inches wide and 86 inches long. I mean, that's a huge mattress. So it's going to be a non-standard sheet that you're going to need for up there. Um, so there are lots of places where you can buy non-standard sheets, but that's what you'll need for, for this particular mattress because it's so huge. So here we are just next to the entry door and moving back into this class A and there's a nice comfy sofa here. It's uh, in a very good position because in a few minutes you'll see where the TV is located and why this is in a great spot. But I love the fact that you've got the nice big window overhead or behind it. Overhead here you've got these really large cabinets. I mean there's a ton of storage space up top. I like the hardware that they use that keeps the doors in place when you raise them. That's a very nice feature in here. Down below there's also two lights for reading and just for lighting up your RV and they're on a switch instead of you know those puck lights where you have to push the little button in the middle to get the individual lights to light out. They actually have a switch so they'll both turn on and off at the same time. Now we're at the Hershey RV show. We're here early and the electricity's not even on yet so I can't show you them turning on and off but trust me they, they do. Um, down, there's also a receptacle on each corner of this cabinet up top so if you need to plug in anything, you're working on a computer, you want to charge your phones, what have you, you can plug in up top. There's a little shelf behind the sofa. There's a little armrest or a little sofa table on the one side. And so you can put things down and charge them. This sofa also jackknifes out into a bed. And I would say, you know, a kid would be able to sleep on this uh, relatively comfortably. You know, it's only... 57 inches by 40 inches. So a really small adult or a kid would have to sleep on here, but it's a nice jackknife sofa. It's real easy to jackknife it and put it into place. So here I am at the dinette and I would say that 
four people could squeeze in here. I don't know how comfortable you'd be, but you could get four people at the table. It's a little bit tight, but they do have a couple of cup holders built in, which in my opinion are a must on a dinette table. Uh, I know personally, anytime there's a drink sitting on the table, I will knock it over unless it's in the drink holder. So I love them. Anyway, this tabletop will also drop down and turn this dinette into a bed. So if we did convert it over, you would end up with a bed that is about 64, 65 inches um, by about 38 inches wide. So again, another small child could sleep here. Um, so just up in this part of the cab, you could get two people in the overcad, one kid here and another one on the sofa. So you got four people up here sleeping away. Now, a couple nice features here uh, underneath this one dinette bench, it does have storage underneath, which is fantastic. Uh, you'll also notice that there are receptacles on each end of the dinette bench and they're not located down below. They're actually up top, so they're very accessible. So if you're sitting here working on a computer or anything, you can plug in very easily and that's a great feature. Now there's also a televator here behind the wall and that's what sort of takes away a little bit from the dinette space because if this wasn't here the dinette could be a little bigger and you could easily sit four people here but they put the tv here the tele the televator will rise on up and this is where your tv is located so you can watch tv closely from the dinette but you can certainly sit across from here on the sofa and have a great view of the tv now just above here we have a nice big window a couple of lights underneath with a switch and then three storage cabinets over top. Now, I know one thing that's super important when we travel with our little granddaughter who's three years old, you know, we have a car seat for her. And um, in our old class CRV, there was no tether connect. And in a lot of RVs, there's not. But now they're starting to put them in. This one's no different. It's got a couple of tether locations here so you can put your, your car seat in either location. So here we are in the kitchen area, and this is sort of a U-shaped kitchen in here, which is a nice setup. It gives you a decent amount of countertop space to work with, and it just feels very efficient, but also usable at the same time. Now up top here, you know, the cabinet, cabinetry in here is really nice. I mean, it's a residential grade cabinetry. It's, it's got the built-in cabinet doors and with the inlays. I mean, it's just a very nice setup. You've got a big storage cabinet here, and then a smaller one over top of the microwave, maybe for cookie sheets and things like that. The microwave itself is like the same size you would have at home. It's a very good size microwave. The shelf can come out and there's a glass plate that rotates, of course, and then there you go. Now down below that, we've got a three burner stove. And then just below that, we have a real oven in here. Now in most of the ovens that you'll find in RVs today, there's only one rack in here, and that's because the burners are in the oven. It's not as big of an oven as you would have at home, and you can't really get two racks in here because, you know, they'd be this far apart. But nonetheless, you can easily get a pizza in here or anything else you're cooking. You can bake cookies or whatever. Plenty of room for all that stuff. Down below, you've got a large deep drawer for all your pots and pans storage, and you also have some other kitchen uh, drawers for all of your kitchen utensils. So in this part of the kitchen area, this is where your sink is located, but they do have some countertop uh, material that goes over top of your sink to create even more countertop space if you need it. You can, you know, certainly you would remove these. You've got an, a nice gooseneck faucet with an integral sprayer that you can use to wash really large pots and pans in here. So it's a great size sink and it's a single bowl, which is a plus in our opinion. Now also on the countertop back here in the corner, there's a little tower of power that you can pull up. In here, there's a couple of receptacles. There's a USB, there's a USC port, so you can plug anything in there that you need. But if you were gonna make coffee or plug in a toaster, you've got those outlets right there. And if you still need more countertop space, this side extension pops up and there's also a receptacle right next to it. So right across from the kitchen area is where the fridge is located. And this is a really nice size refrigerator for a class A RV. And it's a 12 volt fridge as well. So you've got a very deep freezer, nice big refrigerator space. It runs off the battery in the coach and the coach battery gets recharged when you plug into shore power. So no matter what, you're gonna have plenty of power for your fridge. Down below here is another really nice big 
drawer for pots, pans, whatever kind of storage you really want, but it's a good sized drawer. Right next to the fridge, you have a couple of pantry cabinets here, and these are built-in shelves, but lots and lots of room for all your dry goods storage. So here we are in the back of this coach, and we are in the private bedroom, private owner's bedroom. Uh, the bed size in here, let's get a measurement on this, is 78 inches by, oh my, about 66 inches. So it's kind of considered like a short king bed. Um, so it's only two inches short though. So it's a really good size bed that's in here. Uh, I also really like the fact, it's pretty rare that you see this, but it's got a window for your headboard. Now that can be a plus or a minus. I mean, it's certainly a plus because like right now we have no power in here, but there's plenty of natural light coming in. Um, but we don't have that in our RV and our bedroom feels kind of dark sometimes. We just have these two lights, windows on the side. Uh, but this really opens it up and makes it feel nice and light and bright in here. You'll also notice over top, you've got these gigantic storage cabinets, uh, plenty of room up there to store things. Underneath here, you've got a couple of reading lights that you can turn on each side so you can lay in bed and read at night. There's also a USB port built into the nightstands on each side of the bed. So you can plug in a phone or tablet or computer or whatever you need to before you go to bed at night. There are also receptacles on each side of the bed that you can plug into if needed as well. So right behind me here is where a very large cabinet and a bank of six drawers are located. Now behind these, each mirror door is its own cabinet and it's got two adjustable shelves in here. I always love it when they make the shelves adjustable. That way you can control how you store things in here. But both cabinets have that feature. And then the drawers in here are nice and deep, so you can store a lot of clothes in this area. Right at the foot of the bed along this wall that backs up to the bathroom is where your TV location is. You can see you've got a cable rough in and an electrical outlet so you can plug your TV in here. This is in a perfect spot so you can lay in bed at night and watch TV before you fall asleep. Now, it's funny, when we bring up TVs and stuff in these reviews and in the Facebook com or in the, in the YouTube comments, you'll see a lot of people say, man, you're camping, you don't need to be watching TV. What are you doing watching TV? So let us know in the comments below. Do you like to watch TV while you're camping or not? What's your opinion on it? Should you even watch TV when you're camping or not? Now for us, you know, we're most timers, we're on the road nine months, 10 months a year, so we like to watch TV while we're camping. You know, we can watch some ball games. We watched the Ravens game yesterday. You know, watch, catch up on the news, whatever. It's kind of important for us because we're, we're, this is where we live. But if you're a weekender, you know, maybe that's really not something you're interested in. So let us know what you think about TVs and RVs in the comments down below. So here we are also near the foot of the bed and at the bedroom entrance. And there's another mirrored huge cabinet in here for storage. Now this is a wardrobe cabinet. It's got the bar up top and you can hang your garments in there. And there's also a little table that stows away that you can actually use up front in between the captain's chairs. Um, we have that in our RV as well, and it's a fantastic little feature, especially if we have friends over, we can turn the chairs around so they face the coach and you can set your table up there. And that's a great option for your class A RV. Down below the wardrobe cabinet, there are also two more really deep full extension drawers. So here I am in the bathroom, standing in the shower like I usually am. And as you guys know, I'm 5'11". And so if I'm in this shower, let's see how much headspace we have up into the skylight. Wow, we have tons of space. I mean, we have six feet, nine inches up into that skylight. The normal ceiling height throughout the entire RV is seven feet. So for you taller folks, you know, you have a lot of overhead room in here, which is just terrific. Uh, the shower in here is a very nice feel. You've got three little corner shelves in here for your shampoo and soaps. You've got your removable sprayer in here. And then I love the fact that they have these glass shower doors in here. Uh, just a very nice feature. It gives you a very luxurious feel in your bathroom. Just outside of the bathroom, you have a very nice medicine cabinet. This is sort of a spring-loaded door. It almost just hit me in the face, but I caught it in time. Down below that, we have a good-sized vanity sink, beautiful faucet, little towel ring. And then you've got a little spot here. You can even store some stuff in here, maybe a sponge. I don't know what you might put in there. What would you put in there, Susan? Um, I don't know. Okay. Some toothbrushes. Toothbrushes. Okay. Yeah. And then down below that, 
even more storage. So now Susan's in the shower and I'm sitting on the commode. That sounds kind of weird, but um, with the door shut in here, you know, it still feels like it's a decent enough space while you're sitting on the commode. It's not really gonna pass the elbow test per se, but it does feel nice and roomy. And one last feature in the bathroom that we really like is the window. And uh, you know, a lot of people don't like a window in their bathroom, but it does add a lot of natural light. So here we are outside of this class A RV, and we usually don't shoot the outsides very often, but this thing has so much storage space as most class A's do. We wanted to show that off a little bit. Now there's also a TV on the outside of this RV. So that gives you a total of three TVs in this class A RV. Uh, and we love ours too. This is great. You can sit outside with friends and watch a football or baseball game and hang out. It's just a really nice feature to have. It also has a couple of speakers out here and some radio controls. So you can sit outside and listen to the music, but not too loud so you don't disturb your neighbors. So as you can see, there's a lot of storage out here with all these storage compartments, but two of them I want to bring to your attention. The first one is the pass-through storage in this particular compartment. You have a lot of storage down here, but also it passes through completely to the other side. So if you want to keep things in here like an eight-foot ladder or fishing poles or I don't know, any kind of anything that's longer, you know, a kayak even you could fit in there. Uh, this is a great space for all that stuff. I've learned that keeping an eight foot ladder on board our rig has been invaluable. It allows me to climb up, take care of my slides and maintain those and get on the roof if I need to, but I use the back ladder for that. But I can get to things with my eight foot ladder and maintain them very, very well. So this is a very handy feature to have. And then one other compartment I wanna show this one has like a little bit of a story, a shallow storage area in here. It's only about six inches deep. And I don't know if you guys saw, we actually toured uh, Phil and Stacy's RV and they have a couple of compartments very similar to this where they're not very deep. And what Phil did is he took some pegboard and mounted it on the back of here. And then he hangs all kinds of things on his pegboard. So they're very accessible. He doesn't just have a pile of stuff in here. And I just thought it was a really cool idea to use in a shallow storage compartment. Now we're at the Hershey show and all these RVs are just jammed in here together. So we really can't get to the other side of the RV to show you the storage over there. There are, I think, two storage bays that are a decent size and then a small one on the other side. But then you also have your generator over there. You have your battery compartment with your propane. And also this has an auto level system. So your auto level reservoir is in there. And then there's another compartment in the back. I would call it a wet bay where you can connect your water and then drain your gray and black tanks. Hey guys, let us know which one of these Class A RVs is your favorite model and why in the comments down below. And if you want to check out some more awesome Class A RVs, just click this box down below. And Susan and I will see you in the next video.